Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Overcoming Adversity podcast with Amanda Marino, Matt Williams, and Sarah Frias of Next Level Recovery Associates, who is the sponsor, which is also my company. <laughs> Overcoming adversity with Amanda Marino. See, I didn't have to prompt you that time. That was amazing. Now I get it. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Doing good. Solid day. Yeah. Solid day. Solid day. I feel yeah. So you know, I know it was my turn. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I'll let you guys, you know, do your thing and interview me. So I will start off as somebody that knew you uh, and the marketing field and kind of uh, taking your experience, strength, and hope from um, being an early sobriety and taking your experience in the entertainment industry. How did you take that and turn that into the company that you have today? And also uh, touch on a little bit, if you would, on the the show intervention that uh, you're currently, um, currently on. Yeah. Thank you so much. So... Um, you know, working when I first came into recovery and, and went on my trauma healing journey, I, you know, had no desire to work directly with people. I didn't want to work in the field. Like everyone I knew wanted to be a behavioral health tech or like go to addic- become an addictions counselor. I had zero interest in that. It was like, I have so much work to do and so much damage to clean up in myself mm-hmm. that I don't want to do that. So I worked at the breakers for four years, which I didn't know would serve me in such a great way now with the clientele we work with. Right. Sure. So I learned how to speak at the breakers. I learned how to say, you know, do you don't answer someone with yeah, you say yes or yes, sir, or, yes, ma'am. Like I learned how to properly use English because somewhere, you know, along my using days and working in nightclubs, I didn't speak so well. Um, I learned how to actually the breakers, if you were, <laughs> I didn't carry this one with me to today, but if you went to the, got to work at the breakers on time, you were late. So I always had to be 15 minutes early. So I still, uh, missed that on that one. Yeah, <laughs> it worked. I did it for a long time. So it worked for me for a really long time. It still works for me. I'm sorry. It doesn't work for everybody else. No, but you're anyways, right. yeah. I'm, 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 it's better than me making myself crazy and almost getting in an accident to get somewhere on time. That's the way I say it. Yeah. Mm. So, um, so yeah. So it taught me. It taught me a lot. And then I would see this conference come there uh, to Moments Change Conference, come to the Breakers. I'm like, I want to do that. And I had friends that worked in it and got my way and, you know, did a decade of marketing business development, working with EAPs, working with flight, you know, uh, airlines and car companies and, and all these cool things. And then I started to not fall in love with, like, I wasn't in love with that part of the business anymore. I started to do the intervention training, the coaching training and, and all this stuff, working for a case management company called ICM Associates for this woman, Kate, and just like fell in love with it. Like mm-hmm. working with the people, direct client contact, really like connecting with humans and feeling like I've been through so much trauma in my life, sexual abuse, domestic violence, my sister being kidnapped, like all these things. Like I have so much to offer women that are broken or people that are broken. So again, when you see all that, like, how do you go from using all the trauma that you went through to like getting to where you are now? Right. So it's like, you see that you learn how to, you know, kind of focus on being proper, being a business person, you know, dealing with these high level clientele. It's like to the point of, you know, almost five years ago or four years ago and change four to five years ago, being like, all right, I'm going to create my own concierge um, experience for people in recovery. How, how did you get to that point? Well, I, I train, you know, doing that training and learning the, the business and then working for larger umbrella companies that do the work similar to what we do, right. um, that I got to learn and have the experience and the exposure and just really loved it, you know, and said, Hmm, there's some things that are really awesome in the way things are done. And there's some things that can be definitely done better. Right. Um, one being the treatment of team members, you know, um, I wanted, I was not treated, you know, wonderfully by people that were the owners or the leaders and I wanted to do better. I wanted to take clients, you know, best safety into concern. That's why I've always had a clinical lead, you know, the whole time we've had the company and um, you know, the guilt and the shame that I had from, you know, being a mom, like that gives me an, an element of, of a piece that I can do. And then the things that I don't do great, I bring on the people that they do great. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be great with every client or every person. I know my niche by now and I know mm-hmm. what I'm great at. I can tell when a client's like, oh, no, that has to be for me, you know, or this has to be for someone else. But really creating something different in the modern day. We're in 2024. You know, so much has evolved in the past 20 years as far yeah. as mental health and addiction and, and, be, and the being more normalized and people being more comfortable. Um, so, yeah. Do you think that uh, with, again, starting your company in the midst of a global pandemic and COVID, do you think 
that assisted because it, it definitely, from my point of view, seeing what the world went through created a lot more, uh, put like a magnifying glass on a lot of these issues that people struggle with. Like, what, mm-hmm. how, how do you, and a, and a lot of people are like, man, I can't believe you started a business or, or I can't believe you got sober in co or, or yeah. any of these yeah, things. Yeah, like, yeah. How did, how did that transition or how did that like business and your mindset at the time be like, oh, wow, like you either pack it up and do something else or continue to do it because, wow, there's even more people that need this. Like, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, I start, thankfully I had been doing it on the side for two years. So as I was finishing out my marketing treatments, then I, people had already known I was doing interventions and coaching. And I did second chairs for two years before I did one alone. Like mm-hmm. I, I was terrified. I was like, this is people's lives in my hands. So I did a lot of training, a lot of mentor, got mentored by a lot of people. And so, you know, end of 2019 was when I decided to bring Blake on as a partner. Um And, you know, we started in January and then March is the pandemic. And, you know, it was hard. It was hard to navigate because like we're building a business, figuring out like systems and formulas and, and, you know, we're having to go meet clients that can't have family present because they're high risk. So Mm -hmm. I, I, and I felt like I was, you know, 40, almost 40 at the time. And I was like, well, I'm younger in this field. There's a lot of my mentors are in their sixties. Like they can't fly around and do interventions and they can't go to people's homes and put them. So I felt like I had a mission that it was my responsibility to take on as a younger, healthy woman to do these things. And, um, I was able to, you know, reach a lot of people by using social media, Mm -hmm. um, because I had no other way to market myself or the company, which actually made me made next level be like ahead of the game as far as behavioral health goes with, with social media and stuff, creating networking events, you know, going and do interventions with two phones with mom and dad mm. on each phone, knocking on a door, zooms. you know, zooms. Yeah. Just like crazy things. So really building it in a crisis and then helping people in that manner and like stepping up and being like, no, this is who I, this is my calling. I have to do this right now. Just gave me the passion, the fuel, the fire, and and you know helped us to serve a lot of people and just open up that door. Because if you were teetering before COVID, <laughs> you were off the edge. If oh, yeah. you were even healthy and stable before COVID, you were teetering. Like so, it would just put everybody and it just. I mean, all this stuff was going on long before, but it just shined a bright light. So although it was an awful thing for our, our us to all go through, hopefully, like one of the good takeaways is the fo- the focus on mental health, like more normalized. It's health. It's yeah. healthcare. It's not, yeah. it's not something separate. It's in the same healthcare umbrella. Mm. I was going to ask, well, two things came to mind. So I'll skip the one that I just thought of. So some people don't know this about Amanda Marino is Amanda was in music videos. She was a model. Um, I almost, I, I love them because she sent them to me. I think when you were up in like Northwest Florida recently, pictures from like the magazine when you're modeling. Um, and now you're going to be on A&E's intervention. So tell me kind of about that and then coming into the intervention world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. And I love, uh, it's like, when I was little, I remember my mom tells me stories and I remember it part of, partially, but I had a tr- like a lot of trauma, but there was also like this alive, beautiful spirit, little girl, you mm-hmm. know, I would go, my mom would take me to like this Fort Lauderdale festival they used to have. And I would jump on the stage and like dance with the Polynesian dancers at like four years old. So like, I had that always in me, like I wanted to be on stage, loved, you know, love to dance, love to act, love to model. Like I love being in camp with cameras and in that setting, like it just, it brought me alive. And when I was younger and I did it, like when I was, you know, I started doing runway at like four and then, you know, did print work and, and tried, I remember one time I was scouted to do the movie Flipper. Oh yeah. Flipper. I was, I was, I got a lot of callbacks for that movie. Flipper. Flipper. I had a lot of callbacks for the McDonald push car commercials too, <laughs> but I had a wart on my thumb and my mom didn't tell me that's why they didn't pick me. She told Aww. me it was because I didn't have curly hair mm. and uh, she told me when I was older, but yeah, I had a wart on my thumb stay and they were filming right away. So we couldn't do that. But, um, it was really healthy when I was younger and it was really like, I remember being in camper vans, you know, and doing my schoolwork and getting really good grades and participating in sports and like loving with me and the makeup artist would dance in the camper van in between photo shoots, like the German, it was a German catalog I worked for. So very healthy. The second I was turning 18, I had a couple different agents. One of my agents, I was 17, almost 18. They were trying to push me to do stuff that was risque or nudity or like, and see like what limit it was. And I did do some things in that realm. I did do a Playboy uh, thing, Playboy t- uh, Girl Next Door. And I did do some things that I'm a little bit embarrassed about today. Um, but 
you know, it is, it's part of my journey, you know, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's something that I was never comfortable with. And so, and I've always felt like I was objectified for my body and like this whole thing with the Harvey Weinstein stuff, like, I, oh, I, like, oh, this is new. No, that shit's been going on forever, ever, ever. And that was part of the deal. And I was put in uncomfortable situations and I just wouldn't, you know, um, and there were other times where I felt like trapped and, and scared. And so being a, a mom and being a woman in recovery and like, all the healing I've done in myself and my trauma now has, like I said 14 years ago, I want to be on the TV show intervention. I want to do something in front of a camera that's a woman of substance because I am who I am and I'm good at something, not because I am a perfect bodied 18 year old girl. Yeah. Mm. And and here you are doing it. Tell, yeah. tell us tell us a little bit about the the show. So um, obviously, you know, how do people check it out? Where do they go? Like yeah. what, what exactly, what exactly, or who are you actually helping in the show? Yeah, that's uh, so many great questions. Um, so it is on a &E, also, you know, a &E network. It's also on Hulu. It's on Monday nights. So the first eight episodes are the Canada episodes, which was a little confusing for me because I was unclear on like, you know, airing dates and I'm still not 100% sure, but um, I'm coming out in June on the, the second set of the eight. So I'll be on a two I'm a, I'm in three total, but they'll be they'll be towards the end of you know the summer, like June and August, um, and the experience was powerful. You know, I have not been around ever the kind of th situations that I was with the clients on the show. Like I was in neighborhoods of trap houses and people living in tents and the sick, sick generational trauma, like everybody and down the whole lineage of the family all has multiple children, like mm -hmm. six children and everybody loses their children to the state. And it just goes like down every single umbrella, mm -hmm. you know, um, prostituting out girlfriends and, and just like all these, these really awful things like neighborhoods were got, you know, one, we almost didn't go to one of the neighborhoods because of, you know, some de of, like danger and we had to have security guards. I can't speak exactly because it's not sure, out yet, but, course. but, um, you know, the, the reality of what's going on in this country. Like I, we deal with in our work and our day to day. I mean, I help people that call me with anything we all do. Right? Yeah. right. But so people have no money to the most wealthy, but we deal with very, you know, very well off families and individuals. And so to see the third world country like life that is out there alive and well in New Hampshire, in Memphis, in Northern California, um, and just the traps and like, especially like in the, this one area that I was in, that was like a, just a super small town. Like you couldn't go to the, like, I think I saw a bunch of the people that were involved in this case at the grocery store, like a few times, like it was that small. Right. So and it's big in the crystal meth there. And like, you know, once you're in that and that's all, you know, and there's nothing else around for at forever. Like it, it, it just, it just opened my eyes to, to so much more. And it actually, that's why I think I'm being called to like help with the Fro Pro foundation because those the, there's so many people in this country in the world, but in this country that don't have access to care, don't even know there's other options yeah. out there still. Like we're seeing it all the time. And so we're used to that, but there's so many people that have no idea that there is help out there and can't, and have no idea where to start. So those are actually the clients that we served on the show. And I worked with my same producer from digital addiction, who I trust with my life and what he doesn't know. He's like, Hey, you know, like I, he refers to the professionals. If I tell him I'm not comfortable doing something, he does not make me do it. Right. I told them I'm going to be, how I'm going to be with my own clients. And if I can't be, I don't know. And they like 100% support it. Cameramen are crying, you know, with during the intervention. I mean, they're Jeez. very deep, very yeah. deep. Yeah. And what do you think? Like, uh, like Obviously, starting where you started, working through your own own struggles, now being able to give back, like what what's your message to people that either A, don't know about services and B, that do and, and just don't know where to start? Yeah, I would suggest first not going to your primary physician because until recently with our, we have a psychiatrist on our team, it was not a requirement to learn anything about addiction or very much mental health as like a primary doctor. So find a therapist um, that specializes in trauma, addiction, you know, um, you know, you can find that in community service centers. If you don't have resources, there's, there's 12 step fellowships that have, you know, 24 seven zoom meetings and you can look at their, you know, their .org 
Bergs, you know, each one of them. If you look on our website, nextlevelrecoveryassociates.com, at the very bottom, we have a resources page, which is all free resources, links to all the different kinds of meetings for families, individuals, books, videos. So and there's, you can look online, you can look at our Instagram at Next Level. We try to put out quality education about things, but there is, you know, you don't have to have a, a lot of money to get better. You can have just, you know, yourself and some willingness. And if you reach out to like homeless centers or, or resource centers in the community, I mean, they have, there are options and places to start, you know, and it's hard for the people that start with nothing. And it's hard for the people that start with everything. They actually both have such a similar struggle, yes. which is baffling to me. You know what I mean? Because you have the people that have it all. And, and then you have the people that have nothing. And then mm. there's still the same kind of struggle. And so, yeah, I would recommend finding like a community service. Like I know there's 988 is like, that's a suicide crisis thing. But there's like by us in Florida, we have 211. I remember calling 211 back in the day to look for help. There's nonprofits such as, as your nonprofit that's mm-hmm. helping people with jobs. There's, you know, the Release Foundation. So there's a lot of organizations that are offering scholarshiping and things like that to help people that don't have the resources. Yeah. Right. I remember me and Frankie met a guy, my ex-husband met a guy, and he would sit on the corner every day at the same corner, you know, asking for... And one day we both separately went up to him and gave him our phone numbers. And we're like, listen, if whatever reason, like I don't do this all the time, we went up to him and gave him our phone numbers and we're like, hey, call us if you, you know, if you want to change your life. And he was like, ended up calling us and said, I had recovery. I have a kid. I was from wow. Pennsylvania. I've been on the street for a couple of years. I really want it back. We got him scholarship to somewhere. And then he like called us like a year. He like got everything back. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I so like, that. and it's not like that's, I've done, I've had a couple experiences yeah, like that where I trusted, not gonna be. Yeah. I trusted my heart and my gut and like, you know, maybe it, it could have been dangerous, uh, but it worked out for whatever reason. So there are resources out there for people. So if you think you're stuck and there's nothing out there and no way out, there is. Mm. There is. And if you go to a, a, a some kind of 12-step meeting or you go to a church or you go to a homeless center, there are people that more and more today that are educated on how to help people that are struggling with yeah. trauma, with addiction, with eating disorders, with, you know, Anything. Yeah. This gaming. What there's so many everyone I feel like everyone and every family has some kind of struggle. Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. Um I, yeah, I was gonna say, you know, for someone that is like completely new and, and questioning or fully aware that okay, I definitely have a problem or my mental health is pretty severe. I need to get it checked out. I mean, you know, like Amanda was saying, going to a fellowship meeting, if you're uncomfortable with going in person, just going on a Zoom and, and letting them know you're new and people will, op- all the meetings that I've been to in that situation, welcome you with open arms, yeah. you know, um, and, and the, because we've all been there um, and there's that understanding and that support, which is just probably the most amazing thing I've ever seen. It, it's just like a big family and we're all here to support each other. But also on, you know, if, if there's ever any suggestions needed or anything like that on our next level um, website, they do have a live chat, which is actually me. <laughs> um, so if you ever have like, you need any suggestions or, you know, anybody to speak to, I'm more than happy to, you know, be that person and, and provide direction for you. Because I mean, obviously with this company, but who we are as people is we want everybody to get better and be the best version of themselves and not have to feel like they need to drink or drug or or struggle in their mental health. Um, And I just love seeing the positivity from people. And I, I, I am a big, I'm a, big intervention watcher. I mean, I've watched it before I even got sober. I watched it to teach my eight-year-old grandma before she passed away um, what my, what I was like to to understand addiction. You know, I didn't, wasn't to some of the level of some of the people on the show yet, but I wanted her to understand addiction. She would watch it and she would like ask me all kinds of questions. She was my Jewish step-grandmother, but she, (laughs) she, I got to take care of her until she passed, but it was how I taught her about addiction back in the day. I love that. Yeah, my dad loved, he loves cops and intervention and, you know, those type of things, you know, judge shows. Um, But he used to watch intervention and I was like, wow, you know, that's so cool um, to have that as a show. Uh, and just get people the help they need and be able to see like afterwards. And I would always be excited with the, where are they now? Where are they now? I would get so emotionally sad, just like I do with, you know, clients clients or people that I know when like they AMA'd out of treatment or ATA'd and it's just like, oh. I know. You know. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. And it's it's the reality. But like it definitely was uh, just such a, 
a blessing and a great gift to be part of. And it was something I truly manifested. I have a powerful manifester. I've learned anything that I say, I'm going to get this or I'm going to, no, I'm not going to get, I'm sorry. I'm going to, this is going to happen in my life or I'm going to work for this. Sure. I said, I'm going to be on intervention. And then with my relationships with Ken and with Michael McKenzie and Michael mm-hmm. Gonzalez, and just like putting myself out there and just being bald. Like the only difference between me and other people is I'm ballsy enough to just put myself out there and sure. like ask people, mm. ask for what I want, push for it, you know, keep going for it. And so I, I definitely manifested. I saw it happening and it's, it's happened. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. There's this book that I just read. Um, you may not know him. His name's Ross. He's a rapper. Um, but he is big on manifestation and his first chapter is about delusion. And there's good delusion and bad delusion. Yeah. And the delusion that like he wasn't going to be a millionaire. He was a millionaire, right? Mm-hmm. Or he was the best rapper. And yeah. like feeling that about yourself, like so strong, even though he was making terrible music. He thought it was the best music in the world, right? It's you true. Know? It's powerful. I believe that like... I love that book. I believe that like almost everything that's happened, and I, I believe you're a powerful manifester too, Matt. Like you had a... I remember, yes, I remember Matt when he had the Fro Pro Bar and the little Ziploc bag. <laughs> oh, and that's cute. At his old admissions <laughs> office and talking about, <laughs> I'm working at Slash Fitness and I'm going to make this fro- frozen protein bar and da-da-da-da-da. And like... When you believe, okay, there's self-doubt, of course. Yeah. But when you believe that, like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make this happen and I'm going to get help along the way and whatever, and you see it, that shit works. Yeah. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Well, thank you, guys. Thank Thank you for asking me those great questions and sharing with me today. Um, I'm very excited about intervention. Yeah. I know. I mean, the new season, and I mean, but you on it, I think is super cool because even when Digital Addiction came out and a and I was so, I was like, oh my God, I know her, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Remember we did the watch party. My kids were kind of like, oh my God. Embarrassing mom. They, they, were, <laughs> they were proud, but they're they're more. So the one, one little funny quick thing. So my son was in class on the last day of school on Friday. He's, he's done with high school officially Crazy. and walks next week. But he was sitting in class and his friend next to him sent him a screenshot of the real randomly that came by that I made of his last day of high school. So <laughs> embarrassing. Like, so Poor kid. <laughs> They're like, is this you? I'm actually yeah. on a social media break right now. I tried to do it last week and and I I've actually didn't it was the first time I've said I was gonna do it and didn't do it. So I told oh, you Yas- didn't tell me that. And I told Yasmin and I told mm-hmm. Yasmin again. I'm like, hey, I'm really gonna do it. So please, if there's something that comes to you that's important, let me know. Otherwise, just post this me and I'll take a break. My my brain needs a break from it. Yeah. You know, it's exa- it. it's exhausting. It's work. Yeah. Yeah. It's 100%. exhausting. So I need that to, so thank you guys for yeah, today. Thank you. thank you listeners. Please download overcoming adversity podcast, share it with your friends, leave a review, um, you know, watch us on YouTube and look for us on next level recovery associates. If you have any questions, mental health, addiction, um, anything, you know, for yourself, a family member, a coworker, a boss, um, just, you know, we're happy. All of us will answer any messages and any emails or any anything that you need. Um, you can find me, Amanda Marino Recovery. Matt is M. War Williams. Sarah is Sarah E. Mm-hmm. Frias, F-R-I-A-S. And Next Ellen. Level Recovery Associates on all platforms. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.